What's up guys? Today I want to talk about flexible PCB heaters or as I like to call it, heat stick. <laughs> it's a little bit big for my mug, but I guess you get the point. If you watched my content last year, you know that I have been experimenting with thermal PCBs and turning them into PCB hot plates to reflow their PCBs. My goal was sort of reached, but in the end I learned that they're not that reliable for long use at temperatures higher than 100 degrees. So I was kind of giving up on the PCB hot plate idea, but then I started thinking about other applications where this deck could be useful. And that's when I decided to go flexible and sticky. The idea of a bendable heater sounded super cool in my mind and the fact that you could have adhesive on the backside means that you could stick the heater to anything which I think opens up a whole new world of applications This could be used to heat up surfaces, keep your coffee warm, melt ice, maybe heat your seat, keep your dog warm or maybe keep yourself warm Wearable heaters are a very interesting topic here, so I think we'll explore that in another video. People seem to have other interesting applications for this heater concept, so my next task was to investigate the durability of both the stickiness and the heater. Let's start by talking about my first failed prototype. This had the same polyamide material, the same copper thickness and the same adhesive, which should be rated up to 260 degrees Celsius. It also had a 0.1 mm thick stiffener on the edge to reinforce it when using the outer holes. The only difference with this prototype was the super long vertical routed track. This was a failing point because when non-stick the board deformed and created this ugly bend. I think this had to do with how the track was rooted because the copper was only going in one direction. I researched some different fill patterns and opened Altune Designer to redesign the thing. With this method the track changes direction every one centimeter, so the gaps always have a minimum of two copper tracks passing through. Routing it was very simple because I just created two and then arrayed the rest using Altium's space array feature which created an epic PCB maze. If you want to try this, you can click the link in my description and get a free trial of Altium Designer. You can also support my channel and register for 30% of any purchased license. The new prototypes were again manufactured at PCB Way and they almost had the same resistance. This is the temperature versus the voltage graph I measured and this time it also managed to pass the long temperature duration test. There were no ugly bands, the PCB just expanded in a roundish manner, which after the test retained the original shape. There weren't any noticeable damages to the adhesive when it got hot and not sticked. In the data sheet it specifies that the adhesion to a surface should improve with time. But I didn't have any clue if it could sustain the heat for long durations. So I decided to make four specific tests. The first test included a never before heated sample, fixing it to a curved surface and peeling it off and back on. This didn't do any damage as the adhesion was still strong. The only thing I noticed was that it was very important to clean the surface before sticking the heater. For the second test I heated the sample to 100 degrees celsius before trying to peel it off. This time some of the adhesion got melted on the glass making the heater non-reusable. In the third test I basically checked for expanding bubbles which never happened at 100 degrees celsius. This type of failure was only seen at 200 degrees celsius where I tried to reflow some other PCBs. Like I said this is not rated to go up to this temperature so do not try this at home unless you want to do it at your own risk. For the final test I powered two new samples at 120 degrees celsius for 24 hours. When the test finished the adhesion was only failing near one hole but the major problem was that the polyamide started discoloring. You can definitely see the difference when compared to a new one. I continued the test for two more days and this was the final result. This is looking so ugly. I decided to test under a sample, this time operating at 100 degrees celsius. It took much longer for this coloring to happen but 168 hours later it started happening again. So moving forward, I think there are two possible uses for this track, long term low temperature and short term high temperature. The open source files for this heater are available on my github and if you'd like to see more thermal PCB projects come to life, press the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Bye bye.